welcome to my house. I'm going to watch a Doctor Who story nominated by a friend of mine. I've asked them to tell me what it is they love about it. And I have to guess what their favourite things are. Hello, I'm Daryl McLean. I'm a voice actor, impressionist, composer and clown stroke daft bugger. I'm here today to talk about my favourite Doctor Who story, The Chase from 1965. Well, never mind the dead planet, or the mysterious planet, or the devil's planet. We're on a planet and we've got a decision to make, and that's whether to watch episode six of The Chase. And I've decided, and the answer is yes. And so I hope you've decided too, because I'm going to press play in three, two, one, now. I, so I pressed play, I pressed enter, because I was on uh, episode selection. So it could have called it Planet of the Gubbage Cones or uh, uh, Planet of the Intelligent Hexagonal Robots, but. Uh, Planet of the me Mechanoids, nope, it's uh, Planet of Decision. Well, I suppose, I was, I was thinking the other day, I saw, if, if my other half says to me, look, we've got two things to buy. We've got, uh, you know, there's this hose that has these attachments, but it's five pounds more expensive than this hose, uh, which has got this this uh, lovely retracting thing, but it doesn't have the attachments. The attachments that go, and I, and I say, oh, I don't want to make the, I don't want to make the decision. You make the decision. Um, and I always, in shops when, you know, there was a choice between different toys, I'd, I'd feel sorry for the ones I didn't choose. I hated making that decision. So maybe Terry Nation is a bit like me. Maybe, maybe deciding is, is actually more terrifying to Terry Nation than robots in inhospitable environments. And actually, having, having mocked it last week, I'm actually coming around to this because I'm terrible at making decisions. Uh, and I, I, as often as I can, uh, pass on the responsibility to other people. Um, but I know that there's going to be more than deciding going on. I remember one of the few Doctor Who magazines. I'm just going to check that camera because it made a noise. Uh, yeah, it did stop. How oh, interesting. Uh, that has happened once before. Uh, but let's not worry about that. Um, uh, I remember there was a Doctor Who magazine, one of the... I, I did, because I didn't subscribe when I was younger, because I didn't have the money, but I got the odd one, or I got given one. Um, and I remember one of the ones I had, had a, a letter in the letters page where somebody had sent in a picture of the mechanoid toy. Uh, and it was revealed that that was very rare, and, you know, they were lucky to have it, and blah, blah, blah. And, uh, and it looked like an absolute thing of beauty. And, and I do think the mechanoids are... Uh, uh, a lovely design. They're really, please. I mean, they're massive. They're like tanks, but they're not because they have slightly more personality than a tank. Um, and of course, this is their, as Daryl, who has chosen them, is his favourite thing for episode five, which means I can't, I can't uh, make the decision on this planet uh, that the mechanoids are my favourite thing about it. Um, and, and presumably the mechanoid toy would have looked not unlike uh, unlike that. Um, you see, and I suppose, I wonder how long that hung around in Ray Cusick's drawer for that tiny little mechanoid. And of course we can't have tiny little Doctor and Vicky and Ian and Barbara, so we assume they're behind a, a pillar or something. Um, uh, but they're, they're funny things, and I, I'm not sure I anticipated how they would talk. But um, but certainly I, I, I'm not sure I expected this slightly sort of weird communication thing that they have, which makes them actually slightly cute, which I hadn't expected. Uh, I don't know what I'd expected, but certainly what I got when I first saw them in action uh, and uh, in conversation was not what I'd expected when I'd seen those toys and the... Uh, and the, and, the, and the pictures of the mechanoids. But, but actually the way they move and the size they are is, uh, is pretty impressive. And there's a, there's, an, there's, a, there's a record, there's a single that I think has episode six of The Chase on it and is narrated by David Graham. 
that I've heard a couple of times that a friend got hold of. Uh, and I'm sure having having had their name spelt wrong in the credits of episode five, I think they're referred to as Mekons in that, uh, in the narration of that. I, I don't think I'm wrong in that. And, and Mekons was the original name of the, the Mechanoids um, before they got rechristened Mechanoids. Um, I, I note that simply because it might be of interest. Oh, I suppose it's the same reason I say anything in these these uh, these chitter chats that I do. Um, um, but yeah, uh, uh, oh, a bit of beard growth there for uh, Peter Purvis, who's changed a bit in the three th what three weeks since he was, was since he was Morton Dill. Um, and because uh, when you you know when you read it when you, you you read about these sorts of stories, he's got a polo neck. Cause this really is the polo neck story, isn't it? Um, they, they they've really gone for it as a as a as a, as a costuming motif. Um, so um, when when one read about this this story as a as a kid, you know, it features the mechanoids. It features the debut of Stephen Taylor. You sort of naturally assumed that um, those things would be in it earlier than the last episode. Uh, and isn't it because Dodo also arrives in the last episode of the story that she is introduced in? Uh, um, and, 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 and Katerina, although I don't, I'm, I don't really count Katerina as a companion for reasons we'll go into in great detail uh, when somebody is sensible enough to choose the Myth Makers uh, or the Dalek Master Plan. Uh, I wouldn't stop talking for you. Could, you could do one of these conches then, Stephen Taylor. You need a bit of verbal diarrhoea. Sorry, um, you, you've tuned in. <laughs> you've only got yourselves to blame. Um, he's very naturalistic. So that was what surprised me as a kid, because when I was younger, Peter Purvis was a Blue Peter presenter. I had no idea that he'd been in Doctor Who until I got the Doctor Who 20th anniversary Radio Time special. And there's a picture of him in the Celestial Toymaker. Some glorious colour pictures of the Celestial Toymaker. And I'm sure that's Peter Purvis. And it was the revelation that Peter Purvis was a Doctor Who companion, which was a real surprise. Um, you know, it's, uh, uh, you know, it'd be like, uh, uh, you know, finding out that, um, I don't know, um, t Terry Nutkins was in Blake 7 or some such. Uh, and uh, then when I started watching the episodes that he's in, it was also a surprise that Peter Purvis, because he, he also, he did crafts, didn't he, in the darts. He was a sort of, he sort of metamorphosed into a sports slash dog presenter. Uh, that he's a really good actor. He's 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 very naturalistic. He's he's got some nice attitude. Stephen's not as grumpy as he was written up in some of the early Doctor Who literature. He is quite um, he's quite confrontational in this, I suppose. But he was sort of written up as temperamental astronaut Stephen Taylor, and he's 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 not. He's actually becomes the sort of hero when Hartnell sidelined in uh, in the third season when John Wiles, I think, rather pettily um, seems to send out an edict saying, give William Hartnell increasingly less to do. And, and Stephen is the hero of the, the massacre. He's, he, 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 he has a, the bulk of the action in Dalek's master plan. And, and Purvis is more than capable. Another Dalek appendage, I love her. Now this is the Dalek spinny plate, um, thin turd appendage. Uh, it looks less like a turd when it's not spinning around. Um, I like that. I'd forgotten about that. Uh, and there we've got the, the compassy thing from earlier. Uh, I think they, yeah, I, I would happily see new Dalek appendages every week. And uh, this week is a classic for them. I'd totally forgotten about this, whatever, whatever this one is, the uh, inverted hat. Uh, the, the plate of the, the plate of stringy turds, whatever it is. Um, 
Yeah, Barbara, you tell the mechanoid to get lost. There is something a bit sort of human zoo-y, isn't there? I remember an episode of The Twilight Zone, which I, didn't, I haven't seen much of, and it was one I just stayed up late to watch as a kid, and, uh, uh, where it was a guy, is he, is he sort of befriended by aliens, and he's an astronaut, and then it turns out he's just a, he's an exhibit in a, in a museum or a zoo or, or something. And there was something about, you know, the, the slats there that, that looked like the bars of a cage. Uh, and it makes them kind of sort of exhibits for the sort of uh, voyeurism of these rather strange staccato robot things. Um, and that's great, isn't it? The, 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 the thing in uh, Stephen Cell, it's like a, for a kid, you know, it's, it's like a fun climbing frame. Uh, um, so, but yes, I, I, going back to the Dalek appendages, I would, uh, I, like, I think if I'd been a, a, around in the 60s and, 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 and was trying to find new things to do with the Daleks, I'd, I'd definitely give them, you know, a, a saw or a camera or a, a whisk. Um, uh, and this is, uh, okay, so this is on the, the roof here. I, yeah, I get a feeling of height because he's shooting it quite low. Oh, that's, God, he doesn't lie me. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, I buy that from the, from the camera work and the, the acting that uh, we're pretty high up uh, with what looks like giant uh, reels of cotton. Oh, and this is, of course, I have to, um, I have to build up to this because it's the, it's the end of Ian and Barbara, isn't it? Who, lest we forget, have been with us since. There, there is much a part of Doctor Who as the Doctor. They've been in it as long as him. Uh, in fact, we got to know them really before we got to know him because he was a mystery. He's he's, he's we're quite comfortable with him now, and oh, that, more comfortable than that camera was. Wow. Um, but but he's the, he, uh, William Russell has done such a good job of being the the pragmatic hero, you know. He's, but he's not he's not boring. He has a sense of fun about him. He, he's he's uh, you know as he's as cool as a school teacher was allowed to be in the nineteen sixties. I'm sure, uh, uh, and and he's very good at uh, at keeping the situation straightforwardly dramatic and, and Jacqueline Hill is just fabulous as Barbara and, and often bears the brunt of having the, the worst most panicky material to, to deliver but there's so much more to her than that uh, she's a cracking actress um, and I, I had the pleasure of um, meeting her daughter who looks just like her um, you can totally see. I, I turned out I'm sort of sort of Facebook friends with her. I don't know why, um, uh, but uh, I, I went and interviewed uh, her, uh, Jacqueline Hill's husband, Alvin Rakoff, about about something else. He very kindly invited me to the home that they lived in when she was in Doctor Who. He still lives in the same place. Uh, what a beautiful home it is, uh, and yes, and. Their daughter was there, and it was it was, and I didn't say you know I didn't say oh I'm a Doctor Who fan or anything, because because uh, I was being polite and uh, all sorts. Um, but anyway, it was it was that was quite an amazing experience. Um, I, I love what uh, Maureen O'Brien does on on the on the top here to suggest uh, to suggest height. She's doing that sort of um, I, I'm slightly giddy and slightly nuts because I'm I'm high up and I we've all done that I mean I've, I've been on a bridge holding a baby and you have that sort of weird fascination with going well oh, what if I drop this baby now which you know you know you go, what, what? and I think that's your mind saying to you whatever you do don't drop the baby but um but that sort of strange sort of perverse panic thing stroke exhilaration stroke is 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 really nicely done there um I think she's I think she's a really interesting actress Maureen O'Brien and she sometimes makes choices that look a bit odd but that's because of the nature of the filming rather than than uh, any shortfall shortcoming of the 
performance, although I think Barbara's about to get garroted. Um, but I, th I think a lot of her quite sophisticated choices, Maureen O'Brien, would work better when, when you've got slightly less um, sort of primitive shooting methods. So she's slightly ahead of her time. What, but what I had totally forgotten that, that they almost decapitate Barbara Wright. And uh, oh, and now Ian's trying not to pull her trousers down. What, what, an, what an undignified moment for Jacqueline Hill, who I've just been eulogising moments before. She nearly gets her head chopped off and then nearly gets uh, uh, her, 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 her trousers pulled down. Um, crikey, that was. Uh, that went all out for ungainly realism. <laughs> I think you'd have done that again. Anyway, um, oh, and now we're going into uh, the. Uh, so that was a that was a model, but now we go into uh, the film sequence, which they could have saved a little bit of leftover for to do the fight with the robot Doctor Who. But I remember reading in Doctor Who Celebration, you know, the the final sequence, the battle between the Daleks and the Mechanoids. You know, R Richard Martin, who's you know, who was a gifted film director, um, uh, you know, excelled here, and and Richard Martin really does does go to town when he's uh, when he's on on film, and this is you know, this is obviously a a, a, a showpiece sequence. Oh, look at that! I love the flamethrowers, um, but of course by this time the the mechanoids I think have been deemed too ungainly to ever appear in Doctor Who again, which is a shame, because this is, this is glorious stuff, isn't it? Uh, uh, and uh, there's, there's inlays and the smoke and there's explosions. Uh, uh, and God, they look great surrounding the Dalek. They sort of dwarf the Dalek, which is marvellous. Oh, and look at the flames and, oh, that was a bit of animation there, wasn't there? A bit of whatever that, that flash is. Uh, there's all sorts of techniques going on here to sort of go. You're at the end of. Come on, we've had, we've had uh, Abraham Lincoln uh, and Dracula and Frankenstein and um, uh, 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 the the Mary Celeste, etc., etc. And now this is the end of this epic, you know, chase through time and space. Um, we've got a sense of occasion about this, uh, uh, and that, that you know that was pretty. That's that's the sort of stuff that as a kid you'd be you know, reimagining and drawing pictures of and all sorts of things. Uh, and, uh, and, the, and, the, and the smoke's there to suggest, you know, come on, we've got to get out of here because, you know, we're in a, we're in a dangerous spot and uh, things are getting worse because all hell's breaking loose. Good action. Well done, William Russell. I forgot you. That's actually quite a... That's actually quite a way down you've got that. And there's actually bits of flame falling down then. I'm not sure they were entirely necessary. All of this smoke and these explosions, that's, that's actually just a bit of stock footage, isn't it? With the model superimposed over it. But I totally buy that. Uh, that works. That works for me. It's slightly abstract, but I like it. It works. Uh, real sense of scale going on there. Um, okay, we're doing this. Um, so the Daleks have been destroyed by the mechanoids, and as Ian checking out, Ian's checking out the Dardis. It's never referred to as the. Now, Ian, you've been a bit glib. <laughs> so I'm nearly out of here. I'm nearly out of here. <laughs> it's not referred to as a Dardis on screen. Uh, so it's just the Dalek time machine and the Daleks have all been blown up um, and there's a sort of end of term feel but I have a really heavy heart because uh, I, I remember when I watched this as part of Running Through Corridors that I did with Rob Sherman which was the last time I saw this it was it was at the end of watching all of William Russell and Jacqueline Hill's episodes in order and and they're a really important part of Doctor Who. And um, the fact that they stayed beyond that first year, beyond Susan's departure, which you'd just think would be the one that the Doctor really couldn't cope with because she was his granddaughter, and, uh, you know, it weathered that storm. But 
but it but it, it sort of solidified their place as you know really vital parts of Doctor Who. Yes, hello, Stephen. I mean, bad tempered maybe, but stupid enough to go back for a toy panda. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you swear at the? That's brilliant. I didn't. I'd forgotten he did that. He just looked at his panda as if to say, "God, you made me go back for you, you stupid stuffed git." <laughs> um, oh, and this is this is because Hartnell. Oh, I sit in a pub and drink it. And this, this is interesting, isn't it? Because the, it, it, it recaptures that original um, butting of heads that this relationship was all about. But, but this is so sad because we actually, here we know it's actually because they're all, they're all actually upset at the prospect. And you know, we, when, we're, when we're upset, and we don't want to confront our emotions. We say things we perhaps don't mean and we shout at people that we care about. So this is all very real. Um, and, you know, I know that, that I mean, Jacqueline Hill comes back because she's in Meglos. But, but, you know, this is the last time we see Ian and Barbara. And the show has gone on for another 50 odd years without them. But... <laughs> Um, I mean, here, you know, but they're still out there somewhere um, in London, 1965. Hartnell's really good in this, and and it, it proves the importance of Vicky's character because she's the young innocent one, but actually is the wisest one in this situation, and she uses that to make the Doctor do the right thing. And he really, he knows really that the dynamic here between everyone is excellent. Um, and I, I find it desperately sad because I, I care about the people that are in Doctor Who, the actors and the characters, because they're a, they're a big part of my life. Uh, and, uh, and, and this is a big one because they are, they're leaving Hartnell as the last remaining original cast member. And you, and you sort of know as well how, what it will have done to him, got a 50 50 chance. That's, that's not much of a good buy, is it? Yeah, I'll send you, but you might die. Um, and and it, we don't actually, that's the last time we see them together, isn't it? We don't, we don't see them say goodbye, which I think is probably more than I could bear. Um, and actually, what is unsaid is, 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 uh, it is probably more effective. Oh, I find this heartbreaking. I really do. I'm a silly old fuss pot. Uh, I think that's what he's about to call them, isn't he? Oh, God. Yeah. And actually, they don't... They don't say anything. And now here we are on film. Uh, and they've, they've... They've... They've landed in a... In a shed, so we don't have to see the Dalek spaceship. Um... 1965. So you've actually been gone as long as you. It's interesting that they decided to return them to to sort of now, as it were, when the episode is being shown. Uh, and of course, then um, then the said, "Let's let's return you to when you disappeared." So they'll have lots of explaining to do. Um, don't know how they. I don't know how they're going to explain where they've been for two years and what happened to one of their school pupils but they'll uh, wonder where he is it was fun and you were great um, and this is weird you don't have this I remember there's an episode of Doomwatch where a lot of it is done by sort of still photographs um uh, which, I mean, is just a stylistic thing that I say you wouldn't do now, but I'm sure the examples where perhaps you have that straight, they see the police box. <laughs> but I wonder why they did it as, as photos. Um, but it's very sweet. 
Um, and wasn't, I think some of this was directed by Douglas Canfield, wasn't it? Um, I don't know why I think that, but I think it was because I think he cast Derek Ware as the, as the, as the bus conductor, who is, not, I think, not credited in this, is it? But it's Derek, who's a, who was a stuntman. Rather trained actor, but stuntman, founded Havoc, great servant to Doctor Who. He'd been in Caveman Double in the very first story, uh, doubling Cal or Zar. Um, they made it. Oh, and you can see it on the Space Time Telegraph. So that's nice that it brings that back into, you know, having had it as a bit of padding for the first episode. Um, God, he's so good. Yeah, I, I, I feel it. I'm really upset. Um, silly old fuss pots. That's really nicely done. Um, and then we're off. I think that's really nicely done. And I I love William Russell and Jacqueline Hill. I I thank them for being my <laughs> friends in Doctor Who. Uh, and I'm really sad to see them go. Um, and and uh, and I'm not a I'm not ashamed of that. And there was no artifice in, in, in that at all. That's, I, I do, I, I, I care about the people in Doctor Who because they've, they've been a big part of my life. And of course, I can see in a pub whenever I want, but there is something about the fact that this is the end of their journey and we don't need anything as cheap as a cliffhanger into the next story. I think that would, I think that would undermine the import of what has just happened, which is we've just lost, uh, you know, our last, Beckenoid spelt correctly this time, our last um, connection uh, with, you know, bar the Doctor with, the, with that, with that, with Doctor Who when it started. Uh, oh, I love that. I, I, I do find, I think, I think they got, a lot of companions get bad, you know, hurried send-offs or send-offs that are a victim of circumstance. Uh, I think that's perfect. I think that's perfect. And I think they're perfect. Uh, and I'm very sad that uh, Jacqueline Hill died so comparatively young. Um, she's so good. They're both really good. I think they're both really good. And I love those characters. Um, because they, they just pitch it. They just pitch it right. Um, okay. Well, obviously my, my favourite thing of episode six is the perfectly handled departure of Ian and Barbara. Uh, and my favourite thing over all is a slightly trickier, especially as Daryl, as I think already chosen my, my, what I take away mostly from this is the sort of chutzpah of, of going, right, this is a shopping list of really exciting comic book stuff. If you're, uh, a, a, you know, a, a 10 year old child in 1965. Um, uh, well, I, th I think I can say, uh, having chosen, I, I, I think that film, I think that film sequence of, of the Daleks fighting the mechanoids, uh, you know, is a step above the rest of the production. It's 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 where they clearly thrown a lot of money and time, um, and is a showpiece moment that rewards six weeks of the odd um, uh, uh, planets of planets of derision. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I'll take the film sequence of the Daleks versus the mechanoids. So they're both things from episode six, although one of them is a, is a bonus thing. It's the freshest in my mind. And I have to take the departure of Ian and Barbara, which they judge very well, but also that's an acknowledgement for not just the fact that they departed, but of their huge contribution to the previous, you know, however many episodes of Doctor Who they were in. What has Daryl chosen? So reason number six, I can count. It's Ian and Barbara's leaving scene now. Ian and Barbara's leaving scene is really unusual in, in 60s Doctor Who as it 
people point to things like survival as pointing the way to the new series in the Russell T Davis era. But that scene at the end of the chase with Ian and Barbara leaving is so much like the Rose world in the first couple of new series runs. Um, it really feels like the present day. I know they tried it a few times and adopted present day things, even like the War Machines and a few times in the colour era. But nothing like how real that London feels. And then you get the photo montage and there's something genuinely emotional and genuinely heartfelt about those last two minutes of the chase. And it really caps off this mad six episodes of utter chaos with this really heart-rending scene. And you're saying goodbye to, you know, the... There's only one regular remaining after the story. It's only the Doctor. It's all the companions have gone now. Susan's left. Ian and Barbara have left. And it's really is that moment. You can see it echoed at the end of the Green Death and Hand of Fear. But, but that scene is really nice and kind of beyond compare. And it's really nice we have that. And even if you can't stand anything that goes on in the chase and you think it's a mess, that scene's got to touch you somewhere. And if it doesn't, you want to ease. Reason number seven reason reason number seven is the Beatles bit in episode one now I'm fickle but the fact is even if you hate the chase it is the only place to see the Beatles on top of the pops now if you were a, a not we thinking about what's the most 1960s piece of footage you could possibly find you could oh maybe a clip of the Beatles on top of the pops but you can't see it except in the chase all the Beatles appearances on top of the pops are lost, except the clip that is in the chase. And it doesn't turn up in any Beatles documentaries or anything else. That bit of the Beatles singing Ticket to Ride on top of the pops in the chase is an exclusive, except in America. And that is the only place you can see it. So archivally, for people that hate Doctor Who and love the Beatles, the chase is the one story they would rescue from a burning building. And that's got to be have something going for it. I don't know why there would be a burning building with all the Doctor Who stories in and someone only gets one go, but that's the rules of this fictional situation. And maybe the chase is what I'd rescue as well. So, Beatle fans, that is another reason why the chase is perfect and we should treasure it forever. Honestly. Rock on! <laughs> well, thank you to Daryl for going to such an effort uh, to put together such an entertaining video but also that's really interesting because I, I think i mentioned at some point you know yes the empire state building is probably present day and then we have the war machines of planet uh, sorry and then we have planet of the of giants which are the things in the present day before the war machines which generally people say is is the first present day story totally discounted of course the fact that ian and barbara's return is the present day that's the whole point of it is that they uh uh, you know, the, the two years that we spend with them, they actually do spend away in their own uh, 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 journey. Uh, you know, they, they they have aged as much as they would have done had they stayed on Earth. Um, uh, and that, yeah, that is contemporary. And, and then the, I didn't know that about the the Beatles and the Top of the Pops thing, as because I'm not a music aficionado at all, that that is a, an archival treat and that that's the only Beatles on top of the pops that's extraordinary well uh well when well done doctor I, I, I am somewhere in the Beatles archive with the only copies of the Daleks master plan episodes that are missing now Daryl has told he's, he sent me a third file he's, he, he he broke his um response files up into two sets of three episodes but he says he sent me a third one I have no idea what this is Every guest has responded to my request in their own way, which has been an unexpected pleasure, uh, uh, an unexpected bonus of this. So what Daryl uh, is, is uh, going to um, top this off with, I've got no idea. So let's have a look. So thank you for listening to my choices. I hope you don't judge me too harshly for my choice of story. Um, I've got a few things on the boil, can't talk about them all, but there is an audio drama called The Baron Author, B-A-R-R-E-N, Author, uh, which stars Richard O'Brien and Sophie Aldred, and unbelievably, one episode for me, uh, and that's available as a download, it should be available by the time this goes out, um, search for The Baron Author, it's from Spiteful Puppet, search for them, you'll find it, um, hopefully some other stuff to announce soon, but until then... Thank you for listening and goodbye.
Oh, and one more thing. I said before that I love The Chase because it's a bit like a light entertainment show. And I do. But how else do you finish a light entertainment show? With a song. They bring in Daleks in by the lorry. They cause the Mary Celeste, but they're sorry. And they're shooting day for night in a quarry. That's called Aridius. Aridius! The latest robots have been putting some fat on. Whilst Peter Bird is putting an amusing hat on. Barbara and Ian went and passed down the baton. So sad to be Aridius. I just wanted you to know that of all the stories I could have had, I paid me money and took the chase. I know the casters can't glide over rubble. That haunted house is frankly asking for trouble. And I'll admit that Billy's uncanny double could be more uncanny. I would stuck your cities of deaths and your kinders. And shop inferno and blink up for tinders. I wanna float around just like those cinders in Viva Hispania. Cause you know we all say, let's all go back to 1965. We'll feed the pigeons and hope it never ends. Because of what's two years among friends when he sends us back home? Let's all go back to 1965. We never ever want to go back inside All we can say is, well, thanks for the ride <laughs> Oh, do you know what? Um, I'm very touched by that as well because he's, he's done that for this um, Somebody I don't know, never met And in fact, I only started following him on Twitter during lockdown because he kept putting up these songs of people retweeting them of him singing, uh, doing famous singers singing or TV themes done in the style of famous singers. And he tickled me and I thought he was brilliant. So I started following him. Uh, and, uh, and then he started following me for some reason. I don't know why. Uh, something had happened that sort of meant I, I hit his radar. And um, so I just sent him a thing. He was obviously a Doctor Who fan and said, would you do this? Uh, uh, and he's sort of gone above and beyond the call of duty. He's done a song with coloured pictures and everything. Um, and isn't that a testament to what we do best as 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 Doctor Who fans? Is is uh, you know is that it, it inspires us creatively in different in different ways. Um, and I'm constantly amazed at, at how clever and inventive and joyous people can be. And that's a tonic. And that's. And, and, and that plays against sometimes at the end of the day when you're flicking through social media and it just seems that everybody's being a bit of a git to each other. Actually, we, we fixate upon the, the, the half emptiness of the glass because we're almost trained to expect that. Um, I, I adored the way that uh, Daryl, as I say, kindness of strangers, uh, uh, responded to a, a request from somebody he's never met with such invention and such wit check out his Twitter feed, which has those things that first drew him to my attention. Um, I'll, put, I'll put his Twitter feed on, on the screen. Um, and with, with real thanks to Daryl for, for going above and beyond the call of duty for this. I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. I've got to be honest with you, I've never liked the chase. Uh, I tried to be nice about it through running through corridors, but actually, you know, to write couple of paragraphs per episode is pretty easy to do um you know 150 to 200 words per episode you can kind of you can kind of get away with it i have had to talk for uh two and a half hours i hope at least some of it's been entertaining uh, but i've gone into this to, to you know to have somebody inspire uh, a, a positive vibe about anything i thought everybody would be choosing blink a genesis of the Daleks. People are going, time flight, the chase. Uh, but I found this really invigorating uh, to, to, to go to something I've been furious with in the past. I used to get so cross with it. I, I gleefully score it two out of ten. Uh, I, I sort of, as I say, through the prism of Daryl's uh, 
celebration of it and, and the way that he couches it in, in a different way to how you know I would have done as the angry teenager who first saw it. Uh, and I had a riot with that. Ah, it's not always great, uh, but it's always... And, and, I, and I think Terry Nation can be a bit glib sometimes, and I think he can also be a bit... It's almost like he doesn't care that, that he's giving them things that they can't pull off because that's way down the line from him. Uh, but nonetheless, it makes for this sort of heady mishmash um, that is quite unlike anything. You wouldn't do it now. You wouldn't get away with it now uh, of, of pitching something so tonally all over the place. Um uh, and also often so beyond the bounds of what is possible to do with the <laughs> resources that you have. And they just go, I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> um, so if nothing else, thank you for being with me uh, as uh, I learn to stop worrying and love the chase. I'll see you next time. Silly old fusspots. Oh. sketches this you know the Shakespeare one and the, the things they go to later on like the uh, like this you know the hand sketch <laughs>